Hi, my name is Johan. I recently paid a brief first visit to the German city of Worms, or as the Germans call it, Worms, in order to get a sense of this 2,000-year-old community. Cities such as this are always full of attractions. Today, however, I wish to speak of only one building, namely the Cathedral of Worms. It's unbelievable how many historical events took place here. The story told within these stone walls spans the globe. It begins in the German region of Thuringen, or Thuringia, and was, so to speak, a precursor for today's German-French friendship 1500 years ago. The kings of present-day France had how should I say, a weakness for the Thuringian ladies. The Merovindian king, Clotar, alone took three Thuringian princesses for wives. Let me explain. The Thuringian ruler, Baderic, had two daughters and a son, Bertakar. He, in turn, had a daughter named Radegunda. She celebrated her wedding ceremony to King Clotar and immediately left to go pray. The king waited patiently in bed to consummate their marriage, but she preferred to kneel on the ground and pray all night. For years this went on, and it's probably no surprise that she never had a child. Later, she became a holy saint of the church. King Clotar also married Baderic's daughter, Aragunda, and by her had a son, Kilperic. A few years ago, Aragunda's ring was found in her sarcophagus in the church of St. Denis, proving that this story was true. Finally, Clotar also married Aragunda's sister, Ingunda, and they in turn had a son, Sigibat. At this point in time, massive migrations to the west took place from the Black Sea region and Persia. One group of immigrants, called the Visigoths, at that time settled in France and founded the Visigoth Kingdom. Then, it came to pass that the Visigoth king, Atanagild, and his wife, Goiswinta had two daughters but no son. They decided to marry their daughter Brunichild to Sigibert and the second named Gerswinta to Kilperic. So many double marriages in one family spell trouble. Kilperic, you should know, also had a sweet girlfriend, Friedel, the chambermaid of his late wife. Gelswinta didn't like that at all, and plenty of fighting came about. One day, Gelswinta suddenly found herself short of breath and was soon buried. Bruni was not happy about her sister's murder, and therefore convinced Sigibat to take care of his brother Kilperic. Unfortunately, no plan survives contact with the enemy, and Sigi himself was quickly removed from the picture. Also, Bruni was taken prisoner. She saved her own life by getting married to Kilperic's son, Merovec, as reconciliation. As a child from this marriage would have proved disastrous to Friedel, Merovec was quickly removed as well. A son named Childebert who Bruni bore to Sigibert, also didn't live very long. Neither did Bruni's grandchildren or great-grandchildren. Finally, Friedel even tried to kill her own daughter over some dispute. I would say this was quite a normal and modern patchwork family, even though they lived some 1400 years ago. It may be hard to believe that a little while later, Friedel died of a natural death.
only Bruni, Clota, and his son Dagobert survived these events. So, what was I talking about? Ah yes, the Cathedral of Vons. The reason for my telling about this family feud is as follows. Bruni, after the death of Friedel, lived in Vons on the River Rhine. For some reason, she had a church built on the highest elevation. Maybe there had been a pagan sanctuary before. The archaeologists have simply not discovered it yet. Bruni appears to have been the founder of this cathedral. That did not prevent King Clotar, however, from taking Bruni prisoner and having her executed. Hallelujah. Clotar's son, King Dagobert, later took the reins and continued building this church. His family dynasty continued to grow in France. Thus, the Thuringian, Visigothic, Merovingian families became ancestors of many kings to come. And we received this cathedral some 1400 years ago. The next important man was Bishop Rupert probably from the same royal family. He succeeded Bishop Amandus of Worms, about who we don't know much, apart from the fact that he was the patron saint of the diocese and the city of Worms. Rupert took Amandus Bones with him toward the east, where he founded a new city and a religious center called Salzburg. When Rupert died, his understudy Virgil from the Irish or Scottish island of Jona took Rupert's bones to Salzburg as well. Somehow, some of these relics were returned to Vaughan, where they can be venerated. A little further into the future, Charlemagne and his fourth wife, the Thuringian princess Fastrada, were married in the Vaughan's cathedral. She is not well known, but they say that she drove Charlemagne against the Saxons, her people's traditional enemies. Charlemagne then had 4,500 Saxons beheaded and many more resettled in France, which broke their resistance. Very shortly thereafter, Charlemagne grieved very much about her death. The gravestone of Fastrada can still be seen in the Mainz Cathedral, built into the wall. Soon after the year 1000, Bishop Burkhardt began a new construction of this church, which would grow to become the present-day cathedral. Because of his contribution, his grave is in the center of the church, and he welcomes visitors in front of the church doors today. The cathedral was not built just for the sake of building a cathedral, but instead as the eternal resting place for a branch of the royal family. Nobody could have guessed that this branch would soon become the royal and imperial family. Under the altar is a crypt containing the bones of this family. The oldest one is Conrad the Red, who was only an earl until he married the daughter of King Otto the Great and the English princess, Edita, earning him the title Duke of Lotharingia. The marriage was a smart move for Conrad, since his brother-in-law and expected future head of the family was Leodolf, Duke of Swabia and founder of Stuttgart but the events would unfold quite differently. Queen Edita died unexpectedly, leaving King Otto with two children. After a few years, Otto took a new wife, the youthful Adelheid, widowed Queen of Italy. This new marriage was of great concern to Leodolf when she began to deliver one baby after another. Leodolf decided to strike before it would be too late. He rebelled against his father to assure his succession and inheritance. After a little while, Otto had little choice but to have him removed altogether. 
the male line of succession thus moved from Leodolf to Otto's son from second marriage, later called Otto II, and after him, Otto III. Conrad and Lutgard suffered little consequences as their family was not in the line of succession anyhow. They raised their family in Worms. Their son, called Otto of Worms, married a Judith and they had several sons. The oldest was called Henry of Worms. The second Bruno played a unique role in this family's history. In May of 996, King Otto III forced the Romans to elect his cousin Bruno as Pope Gregory V. Not three weeks later, Gregory returned the favor and crowned his cousin Otto to Emperor of the Roman Empire. Needless to explain, this pope had many enemies, and therefore did not live long after that, and was buried in the Vatican. Alleluia, alleluia. The third son of Otto of Worms was Conrad, Duke of Carinthia, who was buried in Worms together with his wife Matilda. I'm glad they had a successful marriage, or I would not be here to show you their graves. Better known Henry of Worms continued the lineage through his son Conrad the Elder, who married Gisela of another important family, and together they became Emperor and Empress of the Empire. It is from their marriage that the so-called Salian dynasty rose, with Henry the Third, Fourth, and Fifth, and from them the Babenberger and Hohenstaufen lines and descendants continue to this day. Again, I am very grateful for that and would not want it any other way. In the crypt underneath the Worms Cathedral lie the sarcophagi of these famous people. First, there is Conrad the Red's tomb. Next to him lie two unknown bishops. The fourth is Matilda, wife of Conrad of Carinthia, and the fifth is the young Judith, daughter of Henry of Spire. Basically, this is a family crypt for the forefathers of Europe's highest nobility. I'd like to point out one more important event that took place at this very historic site, the papal election of 1048. There were quarrels in Rome. A Roman envoy arrived at Worms, where Henry III suggested that Bruno, his cousin once removed, should be elected pope. So said and done, Bruno became Pope Leo IX, and Pope and Emperor got along well for the rest of their lives. The life expectancy of a Pope was relatively short back then. Seldom would one survive for more than two years. Therefore, it was astounding that Leo, who had been elected against the will of the Romans, survived his investment for more than five years. After his death, the longevity of ruling Popes became business as usual in Rome, in the year 1235, Emperor Friedrich II returned from Apulia in southern Italy to Germany. In Worms, he married Isabella, daughter of the English King John Lackland, well known due to his involvement with the Magna Carta.
At the time, her brother Henry III sat on the throne, and he and Emperor Frederick needed each other for a strategic alliance. Sisters and daughters usually serve well for such purposes and provide for bridges between dynasties from which many people profited, at least most of the time. The marriage between Frederick and Isabella was very important for me, less so for the Rhineland wine they might have enjoyed during the wedding, but for the result of this union. Their infant daughter Margaret became engaged and eventually was married for another political alliance between the Emperor and the mighty Margraves of Meissen and the Landgraves of Thuringia. The lucky child groom was Albert of the Vettina dynasty. All later Vettina branches and the other princely, royal, and imperial families of Europe are descendants of the wedding that took place right here at the Cathedral of Worms. Of course, much more has happened here since the Middle Ages, but here ends my story of the more important historic pillars of the Worms Cathedral. Honorable mentions otherwise left out are the religious disputes and issues between Emperor Charles V who was also the substitute pope for the newly discovered Americas, his meeting with Martin Luther in 1521. Such a tour can be tough on the feet and it makes my head spin. For a more contemporary relaxation, I bid farewell to bones, glass, and stone for a delicious Italian cappuccino. During a sudden rainstorm, I thought of how important each drop of water is to life in the greatest scheme of things, be it to nature, history, or even us as human beings.